in the rolling hills of Adams, Tennessee, a spectral tale far darker than the night skies unfolded in the early 1800s. It began innocently enough when John Bell, a prosperous farmer, moved his family to a serene homestead along the Red River. Little did they know, their peaceful lives were about to be shattered by an inescapable horror. The first signs of trouble were subtle. Strange noises echoed through the house at night, tapping, gnawing sounds, dragging chains. The Bell children often shivered under their covers, convinced that unseen eyes watched over them. Then came the whispers, disembodied voices muttering indistinguishable languages, seething with malice. The real terror, however, erupted when physical manifestations began. Family members were slapped, pinched, and pulled by invisible hands. Even the hardened patriarch, John Bell, found himself a target. His health deteriorated inexplicably. His face often bore the red marks of phantom attacks. In a desperate bid for answers, John invited neighbors to spend the night, hoping to share his torment. Among them was James Johnston, a deeply skeptical man. That night, as the household settled into a taut silence, the torment began anew. Unseen forces yanked covers off beds, slapped faces, and shouted in guttural tones. The ordeal broke Johnston's skepticism, he fled the next morning, a believer. Desperation led John Bell to seek the counsel of religious and spiritual leaders. None could exorcise the malevolent entity. Word of the Bell which spread, attracting the curious and the terrified from far and wide. Even future President Andrew Jackson, hearing tales of the haunted farm, decided to investigate. Arriving with a group of men, Jackson was determined to debunk the legend. However, as they approached the Bell property, their wagons inexplicably stopped. Straining horses and pushing men could not budge them. Suddenly, an eerie voice echoed, taunting them, I'll see you tonight. That night, Jackson's men reported sightings of shadowy figures, tormented by malevolent forces. Jackson, a hardened military man, left at dawn, convinced of the witch's malevolence. The focus of this supernatural wrath, however, remained John Bell. His affliction worsened, he often awoke choking, unable to breathe. Tragically, in December 1820, John succumbed to his mysterious illness. On the day of his burial, the witch's voice was heard gleefully singing drinking songs. The family's ordeal didn't end with John's death. The bell witch, as it was now known, continued to haunt them sporadically. Although the intensity of the attacks diminished, the Bell family remained marked by the legend. It is said that the spirit promised to return in 107 years, though accounts of its reappearance vary. To this day, the tale of the Bell which lingers, a reminder of something dark and malevolent lurking just beyond the veil of the known. Visitors to the old Bell farm, now a haunted tourist attraction, report strange occurrences. For the skeptics and believers alike, the story of the bell which serves as a chilling testament to the unknown horrors that may lie waiting in the shadows.